Should you get Receiver? Receiver is a very unique game and a niche all its own. I would describe it as a first-person roguelike gun simulator scavenger hunt. Shooter games usually make you into an all-powerful bullet sponge, flying into a horde of enemies with an arsenal on your back and cannons blazing. Receiver isn't like that at all. Receiver is something different, something altogether new and clever. You're very vulnerable in Receiver. One hit is all it takes to kill you, and as both the complex and the turrets and drones in it are randomized each time you play, to survive, you have to move slowly and play it smart, scouting your environment as best you can and making good use of cover. Making things more complicated is the star of the game, what the developer calls high-detail gun mechanics. In most shooters, guns are abstract objects for the delivery of death to your enemies. In Receiver, your guns are actually simulated, meaning they function like real guns and you interact with them like real guns. Normally, you press one button to shoot and another button to reload, and that's it. That's not the way things work here. You have buttons to check the chamber, to eject the magazine, to load the magazine, to pull back the hammer, to turn off the safety. When using the revolver, you can even spin the cylinder. If you like guns and have any familiarity with how they actually work, you'll appreciate the accuracy and detail here. Even more impressive is how it changes the feel of the game. One hit deaths make you feel frail enough, but needing to manage your weapon, which by the way is also randomized at the beginning of each game, just makes it all the more so. You don't know how many times I've died thinking I was ready to face down a drone only to realize I had not turned off the safety or checked the magazine to see if it was even loaded or failed to even chamber a bullet. Like roguelikes, the game is unforgiving in the intention it demands from you and more than willing to force you to find a way to deal with unfair situations. It creates a wonderful sense of tension as you sneak through the complex, assessing each situation and keeping an eye out for any spare ammunition. Do you spend a bullet on that turret so you can explore this room, which might very well be empty? There's a drone. Do you remember how many bullets you have left in this magazine? You're out of ammo. You had better run. It's worth noting that this level of detail extends to the enemies as well. You can shoot a turret's battery and it will stop. Shoot its gun and it can't fire. Shoot its camera and it can't see you. Or let it run out of ammunition shooting it. This is not an advisable tactic. This system creates situations that you don't normally encounter in shooters. To put it briefly, it feels a lot more like being in a situation like this really would feel. And it's all the more satisfying when you manage to get good at it. What I found made the game so compelling is how it forces you to make intelligent decisions based on what's right in front of you in the game, rather than depending upon some abstraction laid over the game world. There is no UI telling you how much ammo you have left. You have to pull out the magazine and check. There is no minimap telling you where you've been. You need to keep track of it yourself. You can try to run past a turret, or you can see if there's another path around it. It won't tell you. There is no radar telling you when enemies are near, only an electronic ping when they find you and start attacking. So you had better make sure to scout out each area thoroughly, and you do that by looking carefully, cautiously, from cover, not by pressing a button to activate bad guy finding vision. Every step of the way, there is a magnificent blend of intelligent decision-making, planning, stealth, risk, and occasionally blind luck that make for an addictive and emergent gameplay experience. Your goal in all of this is locating audio cassettes scattered throughout the complex which present the story out of order, Some leaving it to you to piece together a conspiracy theory style story involving beings from the true universe, ascended consciousnesses, interdimensional travel, and mind control, because these stories must always have mind control. Given how easily you die, how much time it takes to master the gun mechanics, the randomization of the world, and how quickly a game can be started or ended, Receiver is the perfect game to play when you have just a few minutes to put in. You can hop in, see how far you get, and hop back out in no time at all. And believe me, that's about how your first few games will go. I'm really very impressed with how it manages to create a believable setting with deep gameplay that can be digested in small chunks and remain fresh and compelling for such a long time. Honestly, I think there's a real future to Receiver's mechanics. 
Can you imagine how amazing a survival horror game would be like this? Sneaking through a dank dungeon, stealthily avoiding enemies, weighing the decision of whether you should reload your gun one bullet at a time and risk a monster hearing the noise, or try to sneak by hoping you haven't failed to notice something lurking in the dark. Survival horror thrives on making you feel vulnerable and forcing you to be stingy with your resources. Receiver's style would fit that genre perfectly and make the experience all the more nerve-wracking and satisfying. Receiver is really on to something here, and I can only hope that other games will pick up on the ideas it has introduced and how well-balanced its execution is. Trust me, eventually you'll be able to handle every part of your gun in moments from memory and you will feel amazing as you sneak through the complex, outsmarting drones and the Illuminati alike. You use technology to control physical things. Similarly, there is mind tech, which is used to control the boundless luminescence. Mind tech can be used for good or evil. The threat has been using its mind tech as a weapon against you, and so far has caused widespread sickness and mental weakness. Now that you are in the public 